Good evening. I'm Myron Tannenbaum, graduation coordinator. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand and greet the Mamaroneck High School graduates of 2014.
quiet. To begin our celebration, celebration tonight, the Maranek High School Jazz Ensemble will play for us Flying to the Moon.
Jasmine Sambo. The Before we begin our remarks tonight, I want, I want, I want to, to let you know that we have someone on the roof monitoring the weather. We are hoping to get through the ceremony without interruption. However, should one of the thunderstorms come our way, we will ask the audience to move, please move in an orderly fashion into the gymnasium where we will await wait out the storm. Good evening, Dr. Shapps, members of the Board of Ed Education, faculty of Mamaroneck High School and other Mamaroneck schools, parents, family members, and of course, the class of 2014. In December of this past year, the world paused to remember and honor the life of Nelson Mandela. Leaders from around the globe, Afghanistan, Mexico, China, and the United States came to South Africa to mourn and celebrate a man who led his country out of apartheid with humility and humanity. Young and old paid their respects to this man who epitomized conscience and grace and whose name will forever be associated with the shining moment in the history of South Africa and the 20th century. Yes, we rightly mourned the passing of Madiba as he was affectionately known. But Madiba himself would have been the first to emphasize the crucial role the larger community played in bringing an end to apartheid and in pressuring the white minority regime to free him after 27 years in prison. When we look at the messages we receive in popular culture, there seems to be a great emphasis on being a leader whether it is Sheryl Sandberg advising women or Doris Kearns Goodwin examining the strategies Teddy Roosevelt used as a president, it is much easier to find a book or article that speaks to the strength of the individual than that of the group. Last year, David Brooks published a fascinating column about a number of studies that surveyed Google's vast database of 5.2 million books. One study investigated how the use of individualistic language has changed over the past 50 years. The researchers used Google's database to search for words and phrases such as identity, self, unique, and I come first. What the researchers found was that these individualistic words now appear far more often than words associated with communal sentiments such as community, share, band together, and common good. A second study Brooks cited, again using Google's database, found a 74% decrease over the course of the 20th century of words that we associate with communal virtues such as decency, honesty, conscience, and compassion. These studies are surely open to interpretation and critique, but together they do raise questions about what we as a society value. In the 21st century, when we collectively look in the mirror or take a group selfie, do we immediately fixate on ourselves or do we see the larger group? From my perch on this magnificent stage, I look out at the candidates for graduation, and together they make up a vast and strong sea of black robes. The tradition of wearing a gown dates back to the Middle Ages, when academic robes had a very practical purpose, to keep scholars warm while studying in unheated buildings. So too, the garment was the great equalizer. No one could form judgments about the economic status of the individual when all were dressed in the same garb. While the earliest universities in America embraced the robe as part of the daily attire in the 18th century, it took another 200 years for high schools to incorporate the robe as part of the graduation ceremony. So when I look 
at these beaming faces, I see a tradition that connects us to the scholars of the Middle Ages and to the uniquely American embrace of education for all people, regardless of class, race, or gender preference. When I look closer at this auspicious group in front of me, I, of course, see the individuals. I see the violinist who has practiced countless hours, the student with dyslexia who has had to work twice as hard to read Brinkley's American history, the lacrosse player who gave her heart and soul to the team, the immigrant whose parents have sacrificed all to ensure he is amongst this group today, and the list goes on and on. I see and celebrate the individuals, and you are each indeed unique. But I see this collective mosaic of faces, 372 to be precise, as being so much more powerful than the individual. Of course, I wish you all individual success. But if I have one fervent wish for the class of 2014, it is that you too, like Madiba, will change the world by being a part of something that is larger than yourselves. On February 10th, 1990, the day Nelson Mandela was released from prison, he stood before the throngs of people at the Grand Parade in Cape Town. He began his speech with the statement, your tireless and heroic sacrifices have made it possible for me to be here today. I therefore place the remaining years of my life in your hands. Mandela knew the power of the group, and as I gaze at this graduating class before me today, I too know the power of the group. Congratulations to the class of 2014. At this point, I would like to invite Surin An, our salutatorian, to make some remarks. Good evening, everyone. As many of you know, I've never been much of a talker. I remember the time when I was in fifth grade at Central School. I received a bad grade in the category of volume of speech. Not reading, writing, or arithmetic, but volume of speech. My friend, who had received a five out of five in everything on her report card, mocked me for the rest of the day. She lives in Switzerland now because I had her exiled for this. I've also had the dubious honor of receiving the silent but deadly award on not one but two separate occasions. Once on my softball team in middle school, and yet again this year in orchestra. The first time in Mamaroneck history, I'm sure. So it's a little crazy that I'm giving this speech right now, not just because of my fear of public speaking, but also because I've lost so many class participation points over the years that I didn't think my GPA would qualify me to stand here today. Fortunately, there were many opportunities in this school district for me and for others, whatever inadequacies we may have had, to express ourselves in different ways and cultivate our unique talents whether through orchestra, pace, video production, athletics, or OSR, or Shakespeare from my more verbally gifted peers. Looking back, it's amazing to see how far we've all come, thanks to all of the opportunities and resources available in this community. We've heard the saying that it takes a village to raise a child, but in our case, we were lucky enough to have benefited from being raised by two villages. I first realized this when I was in the second grade and somehow managed to get my fingers stuck in that metal hole at the top of a clipboard. After many frantic attempts, even the school nurse wasn't able to get it out. And as my miniature middle finger continued to turn into darker and darker shades of purple, the nurse called 911. As ambulances, fire trucks, and police cars with sirens blaring dramatically rushed to the scene, it really seemed like our two villages, Larchmont and Mamaroneck, had combined forces just to rescue my one little finger. While some of you parents might not view this incident as the most efficient use of our tax dollars, to me it serves to illustrate how so many people around us, many of whom we've never even met, 
have contributed to our growth, development, and well-being over the years, much more than we may realize. I recently read in the paper about the curious trend of paying it forward in fast food drive throughs around the country. The car in front of you generously pays for your order, and in return for this random act of kindness, you pay for the stranger behind you. So I guess this is actually paying it backward. Anyway, at one particular Chick-fil-A, 67 cars in a row paid it forward. As we leave Mamernik High School, I hope that we will remember all of the members of our families, school district, and broader community who have paid for our metaphorical burgers and fries by helping us pursue our passions, grow past some of our greatest fears, and get our fingers out of clipboards. And as it becomes our turn to approach the drive through windows of our lives, I hope we will make the effort to pay it forward, to help others have the same amazing opportunities that we've had. Thank you. Thank you, Surin. Our faculty speaker tonight is Aaron Shansky, an esteemed member of our English department and a former Maronick High School graduate who, like Surin, addressed his classmates as salutatorian in 2003. Welcome back to the stage, Mr. Shansky. It's a really nice view. Um, thank you for asking me to speak to you today. I am grateful and humbled to do so. Having spent nine years of my life here, four as a student and five as a teacher, I have to say thank you before I start. And I'm going to channel Walt Whitman here for a moment, uh, an early American poet. He listed a lot. So to the students who I taught, to the teachers who taught me, to the administrators, superintendent, board members, staff, custodians, secretaries, guidance counselors, social workers, librarians, tech staff, hall monitors, nurses, and coaches. All of you who make today in our school year possible, thank you. I also want to thank my family, my mom and dad, and your family. This is your celebration, too. Our achievements, both visible and less visible, uh, started with your support. Now, here's my last class or speech. Since it is Wednesday, day five, it'll last 39 minutes. There will be no bells, so it ends on my dismissal, regardless of the weather. I was joking, that was good. We <laughs> um, 11 years ago, I sat where you are in a graduation cap and gown with my two lawn hair and flip flops. I thought many things that day. I'm certain none of them were that I'd come back here as an English teacher. After all, I was positive I was going to major in math and physics. Four years ago was my second year teaching. I had 40 of you in my second and third period English classes. You had just entered MHS. I thought many things at the start of that school year, and I'm certain none of them were about this moment, my speaking, or much more importantly, your graduating. We've all grown. I want to talk to you about not knowing. This may touch on anxieties a bit, but that's not the part I want to focus on. It's really OK to not know things. In fact, it's more than OK. It's sort of awesome in the true sense of the word. I want to celebrate it, buoy you up on the kind waves of the future. I think it can help calm some anxieties about what comes next. So I've prepared two examples on this topic of celebrating not knowing. Uh, First, you. When I decided to teach, I did not know you or what you would end up meaning to me. In my college years, I had experiences tutoring at Westchester Community College, a wonderful and sometimes overlooked place, and volunteering at a local middle school that made me want to teach. I figured I had knowledge to impart, and it seemed like a meaningful way to be in the world. What I did not know, which really is the best reason, is how much I would learn from you. And by you, I specifically mean like the class of 2014, you. Uh, 
you have taught me more about English and, and literature than I thought there was to know. I have a hard time explaining to people who don't teach how much I learn from you each day. Your energy questions, perspectives, opinions, and insights have opened up rich conversations and new understandings for me. Even though I may be teaching the same book each year, it's not the same book anymore because of what you bring to it. Otherwise, there's no way I would read a separate piece as many times as I have. You've allowed me to learn in ways I had not dreamt of. Literally, this past year, for those of you in Psych and Lit, we kept our own dream journals to consider theories of what goes on in our unconscious mind. That is personal stuff. I'm not reading from one of mine now. If someone had told me when I started teaching that I'd be sharing my dreams with a classroom of 17 and 18 year olds, I would have said no thank you. Now I can explain why that's so meaningful. And that's just what I've learned in my classroom. If I were to describe all that I've learned from the pace shows, MLK assemblies, art exhibits, videos, the reflections you bring back from your trips, whether it's to DC or China, this speech wouldn't end. I would not be the person I'm so happy to be today without what you've taught me. And this growth is not just intellectual. It is deeply personal. Some of you call me Shank the Tank. How else could I have known that I had, quote, tankness, unquote, and learned to embrace it? I thought, if anything, I was a Volvo sedan. There is no way I could have known or predicted how much you would teach me. No way I could have guessed being at MHS again would be the road I'd want to drive on, following the other cars going to Chick-fil-A, you know? Uh, and I don't even know if I like Chick-fil-A, never been. <laughs> and speaking of roads, I need to mention Robert Frost. Although he's a wonderful poet and the road not taken, a beautiful poem, it's totally not relevant to you at this moment in your life. Uh, it's a, in the poem, quick summary, the, you take the road less traveled and made all the difference. Uh, but in newsflash, right now, all roads are less traveled for you. You may not know which direction to go in, whether you can turn on red, or even if you're going by land, you might fly. You don't know, and that's great. Uh, second, this joyous not knowing is held true in college and in life afterwards. There is no way I could have predicted the people and places that would be most meaningful to me. I want to share a brief example of how a little choice became this like huge, wonderful part of my life for going on a decade now. If I want to build suspense, I would say not say what it is, and then you'd all be wondering things, but you can go forward. We have an amazing language department, but after I took the Spanish regions, I was relieved to put my days as Alberto Shansky in the past. When I later found out I met the language requirement at college, I was happier than an announcer at the World Cup yelling, goal. That's why I had to stop Spanish. My accent was obviously not good. I would never have guessed then that learning a new language in college uh, would change my life. I took four years of Yiddish. It's a language Jews spoke in the 1800s and 1900s in Eastern and Central Europe. I took it every semester. I got so into it. Um, I befriended rabbis and seniors at old age homes to keep learning. Since then, it's taken me to roads that were not on any map I could have read at the time. Uh, here are a few you might enjoy just for the comic potential. Uh, it's taken me to a garlic farm in upstate New York. Think the shroots, uh, but not creepy, but same rustic scene. That was a bad comparison. Uh, to a puppet workshop at a folk festival in the Catskills with the Congressional Medal of the Arts winner and most recently to creating a Purim play with progressive folk in Brooklyn in which it was critical to glitter my then beard blue and my eyebrows gold. I'm not kidding about that. And you too are going to find reasons to apply glitter to your faces and I will be so proud of you. I'm kidding about the glitter. Um, but what you will find is opportunities that you're currently oblivious to. My happily sharing how there's so much we cannot know feels important for me to say right now as your teacher and soon-to-be colleague. You're about to leave an environment that you understand, that has become routine, whose boundaries and expectations are clear and comfortable. Its absence can feel scary. You don't have to be discouraged, though. You'll figure things out. There are multiple right answers, roads to travel, ways to be. 
If you find yourself in a dead end, you'll turn around. It'll be fine. Uncertainty can just be a marker that you're beginning to understand something new. My saying all this won't change how you feel or prevent anxiety from popping up. Anxiety happens and that's okay. Maybe part of what I can say, what I say can add or filter forward though. I ran this by a, a former Marine who's on our staff. I can share the conversation but not the service person's identity. He said that as a pilot on a mission, it's not that he isn't scared of the heights, the high speeds, or the anti-aircraft fire. He, a Marine, is nervous up there. It's that as a pilot, he doesn't get nervous about being nervous. I thanked him for the good advice. It took me a second to realize what he meant. He responded, if I like that, I should really check out Hemingway. Seriously, though, adults feel uncertain and scared, and it's totally OK. You don't have to feel bad for being unsure or nervous about what comes next. And what's more, you're not flying military jets. You're just going on a nice walk across the stage and into your future. I guess if I had to narrow this down to a six word story to wrap up, it would be imitate Emily Dickinson, dwell in possibility. And since this is not a six word story, I'd also say, be a hope monitor. Check all of the above. Use a number three pencil, even if there isn't one. Use a pen. Use a paintbrush. Let your confusion be entertained. Be brave enough to embrace your questions. Inquire further within. Wonder, try, dance, hypothesize, envision, eat, sleep, laugh, and keep going. Yeah. It has been a privilege. You will be missed, but I'm so excited for what comes next for you and for the moments when you can look back and realize all these wonderful things you've learned that you could never have predicted as you sat here right now. Congratulations, be well, and much love. Thank you, Mr. Shansky. Margo McClay, president of our student council, will now say a few words. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> Last week, I found an essay I had written in eighth grade. And after reading it, I was reminded that I wasn't originally intending on coming to Mamaroneck High School. However, just that spring, after careful deliberation, I decided to forego the small private school my mom had attended and join the much larger, and at that point, slightly more intimidating Mamaroneck High School community. Although not fully aware of all the opportunities MHS had to offer, from brief observations, I was still able to note in my essay that Mamaroneck High School provides freedoms that I would not otherwise have. It provides an extensive list of electives and a chance to be unique. There is no mold to conform to when I enter Mamaroneck High School next year. Instead, MHS offers acceptance. And as a result, it boasts, it boasts a diverse student body with different ideologies, styles, and personalities. Despite this seemingly definitive statement, there was still a lot of doubt. My essay did not end with that line, but rather, what if? After spending four years participating in classes, clubs, and sports teams, we have grown together and through each other. Now, I can definitively say that MHS has offered all that I speculated and much, much more. It offers not only acceptance, but support. Throughout our four years, we've each gone out of our way to explain complicated theories and problems in classes, to attend each other's concerts, and cheer for each other at sporting events. We have developed together, each drawing from the extensive array of individual programs Mamaroneck offers to create the exceptional class of 2014. In this, we have learned that we can either accept life passively or make success happen. We each took actions to procure our happiness at Mamaroneck High School, both as a class and individually. We made our experience the best it could be and shaped it to be what we wanted it to be. Wherever you each find yourselves next year, I hope that you actively pursue your interests and take the actions necessary to make each of your experiences what you want them to be so that 
when you have to answer your what if question, you won't be left dreaming of different endings. Congratulations, class of 2014. Thank you, Margo. And now Holden Greenberg, the senior class president, will present the class gift. Good evening, and welcome to Maronick High School's 2014 commencement ceremony. Welcome to the faculty and the staff, to our family and friends, and to my fellow members of the class of 2014. Thank you all for being here tonight. Tonight, you are hearing several speeches designed to inspire us to do great things in the years ahead. We all have lots that we're trying to accomplish, but in the process of doing so, I hope we will also, to paraphrase Calvin from Calvin and Hobbes, find the time to do all the nothing we want to do. Your senior class representatives, Zarvan Shah Sif, Miles Weinrib, Mimi Zimmer, and Ariel Zoland, as well as myself and our class vice president, Ella Volpano, are proud to announce that our class gift is a donation to the newly created Tiger's Den. Located in the science wing of the high school, this is a place where students can go to de-stress. The Tiger's Den will offer a multitude of classes, including time management workshops, mindful eating workshops, relaxation and meditation groups, and leadership training. A plaque will be added to the room honoring the class of 2014. A special thank you to our class advisor, Aaron Ramirez, for helping us along the way. Thank you for listening, and to my fellow classmates, congratulations and good luck. Thank you, Holden. Only one award is given every year at graduation. Anne Borsellino, president of the Mamaronic Teachers Association, will present this very special award. Members of the Board of Education, Dr. Shapps, Ms. Klain, fellow teachers, parents, and members of the class of 2014 and invited guests. On behalf of all of your teachers, I would like to express our sincere congratulations and best wishes to the class of 2014. Tonight, I have been given the privilege of presenting the Boothby Award. This award commemorates Arthur Boothby, who, who was a superintendent of Mamaroneck Schools from 1917 to 1941. The Mamaroneck Teachers Association presents this award annually to the graduating senior who best exemplifies the ideals of public education, the ideals so highly revered by its namesake. To this day, the Boothby remains the only award presented at the graduation ceremony. And therefore, its receipt is a most significant accomplishment. Each year, our high school faculty faces the daunting task of selecting one student from an impressive list of nominated candidates. The result of this balloting process is one of the best kept secrets at Mamaroneck High School. Once again, after rigorous review, our teachers have made the difficult choice. And as we describe this year's recipient, I am sure that you will agree that it was the right choice. This year's recipient came to our school system at age 12, leaving his native Puerto Rico as a toddler. When he and his mom came to New York to be closer to family, and start their lives anew as they tried to cope with the loss of his beloved teenage sister. At the age of 11, he experienced the unthinkable. His mom, the light and anchor of his life, also passed away. It was then that he left the comfort and familiarity 
of his life in Yonkers to start over yet again with his grandmother and uncle in Larchmont. And it was then that we were blessed to receive one of the most courteous, tenacious, gracious, inspiring students who has ever walked the halls of Mamaroneck's middle and high schools. In my seven years that I have been involved with this award process, I have never seen such volume nor depth of accolades submitted by multiple teachers in nominating this fine young man. Please allow me to share with you just a few excerpts from those nominations. He is exceptional in moral character. He is a champion of fairness and respect for his teachers and more for his peers. You can always count on him to do the right thing at the right time without being asked. He is one of the few students that I have encountered who wants more than what he can see and more than what others think is possible. A true gentleman. He is one terrific kid. And the school lucky enough to have him will be changed forever. And there is a lucky school that is about to be changed. Columbia University has recognized what we already know, that he is the one-of-a-kind student. They made a wise choice in selecting a very special young man who will surely make the most of every opportunity in the future. He will bring to Columbia the many gifts that he has shared with us, his knowledge, his service, his many talents. Above all, he will bring his love of learning, not for the sake of getting good grades or a high paying job, but for the ability to turn what he learns into resources and tools to help others and to leave this world better than he found it. This year's recipient also has a flair for the theatrical and was selected to perform with the Semi-Royal Shakespeare Company. He successfully performed a Midsummer Night's Dream and was recently awarded a new role in the company's upcoming season. He is known for his volunteer and service work. When he was a junior, he was chosen from over 160 applicants to be a Caprice advisor. And he took the role of helping freshmen transitioning into high school very seriously. The Boothby is a very special award and our recipient is a very special person. For his strength, his gentle kindness, his generosity of spirit, his intelligence, and the wisdom beyond his years, it's my pleasure to proudly announce the 2014 Boothby Award goes to Diego Durson. Congratulations, Diego. I would like to welcome Mimi Zima, our valedictorian, to address the senior class. Thank you, Ms. Klein, and good evening, everyone. For those of you who have not seen the movie adaptation of John Green's tear-jerking Fault in Our Stars, I thought I would begin with a short introduction to my favorite author. John Green's novels are read widely and wildly by teens and adults alike. He has been heralded by the New Yorker as the Teen Whisperer, a fair title when you look at the size and reach of his fan base. Green, though best known as a novelist, is also the leader of a two plus million strong YouTube community. The mantra of these community members, known as nerd fighters, is the saying, don't forget to be awesome or DFTBA for short. Given Green's widespread influence, 
I thought it would be appropriate to turn our attention to his message, don't forget to be awesome. Green's motto sounds somewhat paradoxical at first. The opening, don't forget, sounds so mundane. Don't forget to let the dog out, don't forget to bring your keys, or don't forget to put that paper on Turn It In. But don't forget to be awesome? Well, that sounds pretty different. Being awesome is such an intimidating, monumental aspiration to do something so astounding that you inspire literal awe in others. But then to say it as almost an afterthought or a reminder, don't forget to be awesome, well, that implies that awesome is a daily choice. The more I thought about it, the more I understood Green's message, don't forget to be awesome, that awesomeness is like mindfulness. If we're aware enough of ourselves, but more importantly, our surroundings, we can seize the myriad opportunities for awesome that any given day offers. So in order to figure out how to describe awesome, I conducted a highly scientific survey, by which I mean I asked my friends. <laughs> there was one response that I think community members can recognize. At that red light on Mamaroneck Avenue by the train station, be alert for cars that are trying to exit the gas station and make an effort not to pull up and block the exit. I gleaned from that response that being awesome is noticing a car trying to pull out of the lot and cross traffic, and then letting him nose out in front of you and be on his way. Pulling up and blocking him doesn't mean that you're a malicious person. It just means that you're unaware of how you fit into the general picture of traffic. We often stop to think about how what we say and what we do affects those who are close to us, and that's being considerate. But being awesome, I think that means to take an extra step to consider how our little actions affect those to whom we aren't close, like that person trying to pull out of the parking lot. Now it seems to me that in order to be awesome, we must first be aware. Not just aware of ourselves, but aware of our surroundings. If we're in line at the store with a cartload of groceries, an opportunity for awesome exists if we notice that the person in line behind us is carrying only a single carton of milk or is frantically checking her watch. Whether or not we offer to let her go in front of us in line is dependent on our noticing that we could let her go with little cost to ourselves. Green's message, don't forget to be awesome, should remind us not for to forget to be aware because often it is only when we are mindful of our surroundings and others that we notice opportunities to be awesome. In conclusion, I offer a caveat, that we not get so caught up in our own pursuit of awesomeness that we forget to acknowledge the awesomeness of others. I think that one way to be awesome is to realize that other people are as awesome as we are, and then to make an effort to find it. When I was in a New York City elementary school, we had a security guard named Ida whom you might have thought was a somewhat gruff little old lady. You might have wondered what capacity Ida had to defend the school. The year before I arrived, first graders interviewed Ida and learned that she was among the first students to integrate the Woolworth lunch counter in Greensboro, North Carolina in 1960. Ida was awesome and no one messed with her. It doesn't take a formal interview to uncover someone's awesomeness. Next fall, we will be surrounded by hundreds or even thousands of new awesome people. Heeding Green's advice and remembering to be awesome could be just as simple as knocking on a hallmate's door and starting a conversation. Next year, we will be presented with countless opportunities for awesome, and all we have to do is be aware enough to take them. Thank you. Thank you, Mimi. And now our superintendent, Dr. Robert Shapps, will address the graduates. Members of the Board of Education, colleagues in administration, distinguished members of the faculty, families, friends, and most importantly, members of the class of 2014, I congratulate you for earning your high school diploma. By all historical accounts, you are the 125th graduating class of Ameronic High School. While the world has changed, it is quite remarkable how the purpose of school and the important issues facing schools and students remain the same. Looking back, 
it appears the common experience of students learning a core academic curriculum and opportunities to participate in extracurricular activities like French club, the school play, orchestra, and baseball have not changed over the course of the last century and a quarter. In fact, from the annals of the 1924 MHS commencement issue of the high school quarterly yearbook, The Spy, it was noted that during the 1889 inaugural opening of American of the Maranick High School, the concern of, the guarantee, of guaranteed attendance was already in question, caused by the perennial issue of open campus, as students, quote, demonstrated irregular attendance, leading to pick berries and tend to the cow. Today we face a similar issue as many of you left school to seek out berry smoothies and found time to put gas in your cars. Public education over the same historical period has been defined by the utility or practical purposes of educating children to achieve college acceptances, get jobs, and become good citizens. Moreover, the notion of opening the school door for everyone speaks to our democratic principles and the American spirit of individual potential and opportunity. This pragmatic experiment has worked well for Americanic students, as historically those who have come before you have utilized the benefit of their educational experience to meet with great success in, the pers in their personal and professional lives. From observing you over the past four years and witnessing your accomplishments and commitment to learning, it is most evident that you will match or exceed those who came before you. As you assemble here today, just over 72% of your life thus far has been connected to this institution called school. I bring this to your attention as a means to convey how the past 13 years of schooling of Ameritech will serve you in the years ahead. Over the same period of your public school journey, we have witnessed challenges to our safety, financial instability, and tremendous change in the use of technology. As you transition to, the, to higher education in the workplace and the 21st century unfolds, the guarantees and the givens about the trajectory of school, work, family, and success will be redefined. We expect that in the near future, your place in the world will be, be determined by your capacity. That is, what you know, what you can learn, what you create, your ability to communicate, and whether you can add value. To this end, I believe, in the future, you will clearly see the value and utility of your Mamaronic education. Certainly, you will struggle to remember what you read in, in grade 10 English or embellish your role on the soccer and baseball teams. You may question the amount of time spent learning math that is underutilized or forgotten. However, in your future formative experiences of learning and work, the utility of your education will, be unexpected, will unexpectedly motivate, inform, guide, and influence how you complete a project, prepare for a presentation, interject a new idea, and share your opinions. The experiences of failure and success, borne out by your persistence, self-control, grit, curiosity, and self-confidence, will propel you and accelerate your learning curve and allow you to adjust, react, rest, and move forward. These tinctures of, or glimpses of schooling will reappear at unforeseen moments. They will cause you to giggle and smile, reflect and sigh. They will confirm in many ways that while we never promised or guaranteed that 13 years of learning would afford you everything you wanted or needed, by walking through the school door, we've equipped you to reach your full potential and allow you to say with confidence, I know the way forward and we'll find a way. I wish all of you bright and successful futures. Congratulations and best of luck. Thank you, Dr. Shapps. Our last remarks tonight before the awarding of the diplomas will come from Stanley Fetterman, a member of the Board of Education. Thank you, Ms. Klein, Dr. Shapps, fellow board members, faculty and staff, parents, grandparents, and friends, and most of all, the Maranek High School graduating class of 2014. I know what you may be thinking. After 13 years of schooling, we can tell him something about being Board of Education. And you would be right to claim that privilege for this evening is about celebrating you. 
You can begin the work of remaking the world tomorrow. Tonight, we honor you for what all of you have achieved. And I see that you have dressed for the occasion. I would say that you look like a million bucks, except that from my vantage, as one of those who has collectively imposed taxes on this community to spend on your education, you look more like a hundred million bucks. Those of you still interested in math may have guessed that I arrived at that sum by multiplying the more than $25,000 expended on average on each student in this district this past year by the number in this graduating class and then by 13 for the years you have spent from kindergarten through high school. If you want to see what just a million bucks looks like, grab two of your friends and take a selfie. Good education is expensive. Thankfully, this community bears it willingly. This year's school budget of nearly $130 million was approved at the ballot box by over 78% of those voting. That's more than three quarters volunteering to pay some of the highest property taxes in the nation. We do it for you, of course, but we do it as much for ourselves. The simple truth is that we will become increasingly dependent on you for a peaceful, prosperous, and more just world. We count on you to act creatively and responsibly, both individually and collectively. Tonight, your academic attire says you are here in your collective personality. It's a uniform sea of black with accents of orange. It recalls an ID inscribed on the back of our $1 bill. E Chloribus Unum, one out of many. Each of you, of course, is a unique individual. No two of you, not even identical twins, have the same combination of genes and experiences that shape your personalities. And there is more difference. 13% of this graduating class was born in a country other than the US, 25 countries in all. Many more of you have one or more parents who were born abroad, as I did. For many of you, English is not your first language. Each of you has had a unique experience here, some of it chosen by yourselves, much of it imposed on you. You've been taught and tested, sorted and grouped into multiple categories. But tonight, you share the same celebration of your common achievement graduation from one of the great American public high schools. Tomorrow, each of you will begin a whole new series of individual decisions, choosing what to study, what work to do, whom to love, what to defend. You may be expecting to receive some advice from me. More likely, you're dreading it. So rather than offer the advice of someone who went through another high school in the middle years of the last century, I offer the thoughts of three more recent graduates from a Maranek High School with whom I've remained in touch. One, Matthew Futterman, MHS 87, writing in the Wall Street Journal last week from Brazil about the members of this year's United States World Cup soccer team, urges us to root for them unreservedly. He grants that, quote, there are all those quasi-foreign players on the roster, players with one American parent, which makes them eligible for the U.S. roster no matter where they grew up or how broken their English is. Suspend all nativist tendencies for the next month, at least, he advises, except that not only did one of them score the winning goal in the first game against Ghana last week, this has been an essential formula for American exceptionalism for 300 years. We take talent from anywhere and put it to work on our behalf. He learned that here in this school district, and it is increasingly clear. Our first kindergarten class taught alternately in Spanish and English, half of the children from Spanish language dominant homes and half from English language dominant homes is also graduating this month to a first grade based on the same model. A new dual language kindergarten class will take its place. 
If this experiment works out, we should know in a few years, a similar multicultural experience may be offered to increasing numbers of, our, of new students. Another graduate, Dan Futterman, MHS 85, speaking at Columbia's class day last month, reminded the new baccalaureates that with the privilege of graduating from one of the great universities of the world comes responsibility. Do not shut the door behind you, he implored. Each of you, he continued, has a responsibility to turn around and give someone else a hand up, up the stairs and through the door. The same is true for each of you. You may not be graduates of a great university, not yet anyway, or perhaps ever, but 90% of the world's population would give almost anything to be where each of you is tonight. And next year, you can start giving back by voting for the new school budget. Finally, I want to pass on some advice from David Futterman, MHS 83, in a letter he wrote to his son on the occasion of the young man's graduation from high school last year. As you might expect, it is more personal than the two previous excerpts, but universal in its application nonetheless. Take chances for love, he wrote. When you meet the right person, he went on, it will feel like a thunderbolt. Don't let that person get away even when it seems hopeless. I'm living proof, he confessed, that it can work out. Then, stand up for what is right. Authority figures, your peers, and even your friends will do and say things that you will know are wrong. Be true to your own mor morality. Don't be swayed. He, too, learned that here. There is more to the letter, but the most important advice is saved for last. Call your mom, she worries. I would add here that if you don't have a mom, call your dad or someone else who worries about you. And if you don't have someone to worry about you, go out and find someone. Then you will have the great gift of having someone to worry about. <clears throat> As you shed your academic gowns tonight, you will become e unum pluribus, forgive my attempt at a Latin sentence, many out of one, with many individual choices to make. And all of the choices each of you will now be making collectively and individually, mainly for yourself, perhaps the next dozen years, increasingly for others as the years pass, we wish you good fortune for our sake as well as yours. Thank you. Okay, as the principal of Mamaroneck High School, I certify that the following students have met the requirements for graduation and may receive their diplomas. Row one, please stand. Tamar Abudi. Soren An. Theophilus Alexander. Eric Alamanestianu. Robert Amoyle. Anlis Andre, Gabriella Anselmo, Jesenia Aponte, Rachel Alt, Zachary Ortieri, Timothy Barbella. Richard Barella, Alexa Barrett, 
Andrew Bartell, Jack Bauer, Samuel Bauman, Julia Bell, Linda Bello, Mac Benson, Jonathan Berkovich, Benjamin Burke, Matthew Bernstein, Alexander Beener, Sarah Beanstalk, Samuel Blunt, Lee Bodkin, Ariana Bodor, Hunter Boyle, Kayla Brito, Gregory Brown, Nicole Bunder, Alexander Burks, Joseph Cabrera, Douglas Campbell, Anders Caputo, Brian Carducci, Joseph Carney, Brianna Carroll, Margaret Meg Carroll, Sarah Salona, Andrew Santino, Gabriel Churpanyanga, Christine Cifuentes, Colette Clark, Abigail Clay, Sophie Cohen, Molly Cohn, Sarah Cohn, Mackenzie Coleman, Alexandra Contreras, Paula Cortina, Lauren Catronio, Samuel Cousin, Fabian Crossman, Sarah DaCosta, Zachary D'Alba, Grant Daly, Brian Donoski, Alyssa Donoy, Emily Dujermay Du Serfontaine, Jacqueline DeVito, Sydney DeBaker, Jessica DeGina, Lisa Del Bianco, Jacob Decino, Matthew Donahue, Sydney Dooms, Henry Dopsch, 
Margaret Dowd. Diego Durson. Connor Dunleavy. Maxwell Ellis. Elizabeth Engel. Roberto Espelot. Christian Estrada. Aaron Ettinger. Ricardo Eugenio. Benjamin Everhart. Teresa Fabrizi. Mark Velotti. Luis Ferraro. Alma Figueroa. Lucy Fischel. Alexa Forns. Abby Friedman. Elizabeth Fullerton being presented with her diploma by her mother, Kathy Fullerton. Emmett Gaffney. Drew Gallagher. Emily Galvez. David Gamboa. Julio Garcia Ortiz. Laura Gardner. Ross Garfield. Jillian Garfinkel. Jordan Garofalo. Olivia Garzona. Alexander Gerace. Evenson Germain. Anne Gerspak. Emily Gersberg, Gregory Giwala, Dominique Gianelli, Macaulay Gibbons, James Gilpin IV, Ian Ginsberg, Rachel Gittleman. Lisa Glauber, Chris Goler, Catherine Gold, Juliet Goodman, Catherine Goodman, Emma Gottdiener, Jennifer Gottfried, Sarah Graham, Aslin Bramajo, Alexander Green, Holden Greenberg, Catherine Grinnell, Stefan Guilano, Sarah Haas, Charlotte Ann Hall, Alessandra Halperin, Liam Hanley, Aaron Herbsman, Bonnie Interiano, Rowan Hewson, Jessica Hill, Allison Hirschhorn, Charlotte Hoffman, Margaret Hofstead, Jamie Horowitz, Sean Howard, Edgar Hunter, Zachary Hurwitz, 
Diego Iacono, Peter Iannarelli, Logan Infantino, Josue Iturbide, Thomas Iverson, Destiny Jackson, Emily Jacob, Krishnapriya Jadav, Kelly Jamison, Kelly Jansen, Grace Jarrett, Caroline Jensen, Bridget Johansson, Theo Jolie, Marina Juan. Gwendolyn Kaler. Susanna Kaler. Benjamin Kalish. Kiyoshi Kaneshiro. Moni Kanetti. Yeonjin Kang, Eliza Cantor, Haley Caro, Noah Katz, Benjamin Katzenstein, Jacqueline Keller. Jasmine Kerr being presented with her diploma by her mother, Michelle Henry. Danielle Kim. John Kyle Koenig. Carolyn Kessner. Jessica Kogan. Daniela Kohler, Joshua Kohler, Barbara Kruljak, Spencer Kupperberg, Henri Karoki, Eric Kuschel, Lisa Labruciano, Samuel Laidow, Isabel Lankler, Thomas Lara, Cooper Lavin, Peter Lawless, Emily Lazarus, Rosa Yesenia Lechuga, Dylan Leffler, Alexander Lysol, Julia Leslie, Joshua Lodge, Claudia Lopes, Ariane Lucchini, Dylan Lundy, Alexander Maybe, Christopher Madeira, Stephanie Magana, Teddy Magram, Brendan McGuire, Andres Macaram, Gabriel Macaram, Dennis Maldonado, Elver Maldonado. 
James Maldonado. Wendy Maldonado. Zoe Malzone. Michael Mancino. Nicole Mineta being presented with her diploma by her mother, Debbie Mineta. Benjamin Marcioni. Rachel Marcus. Anna Margolis. Sarah Marsh. Gabrielle Martello. Benjamin Martin. Camilla Martin. Greta Massey. Ryan Matt. Carlos Mazariegos. Brian McCabe. Margo McClave. William McDermott III. Nicholas McElroy. McElroy. <laughs> McElroy. Thomas McEvely. William McMillan. Margaret McNally. Christopher Medina. David Meister. Mary Shea Mena. Vivian Mendoza. Jessica Messina. Christy Miasta being presented with her diploma by her mother, Michelle Miasta. Theo Morris being presented with his diploma by his mother, Mary Beth Jordan. Rachel Moskowitz. Joshua Mota. Michaela Mulready. Thomas Moratori. Blakely Nagy. Samantha Nagy. Mark Najjar. Bisma Nakvi. Sarah Nyer. Leah Nesdale. Georgina Nieto. Adam Nisanoff. Andrew Novick. Jose Novoa. Morgan Nugent. Jill Obaldi. Elena Oduard. Jesse Offenhart. Rie Ogasawara. Hannah Oran. Teresa Ardones Lopez. Diana Ortiz. Matthew Ortiz being presented with his diploma by his mother, Olivia Bridges. Star Ortiz. Francis Owens. Alexandria Patty. Olivia Peniston. Imani Pettiford. China Perot. Bruno Pizal. Lucas Pizal, Bradley Pagostin, Kelly Pullman, Joshua Policano, Kenneth Pomerantz, 
Emily Porter. Xiomara Portugal. Amanda Prenti. Daniel Pressman. August Jack Propercy. Noam Radcliffe. Adam Rader. Tess Ramos Dries being presented with her diploma by her mother, Lilia Ramos Dries. Leone Rawls. Sophia Rautianma. Megan Reddy. Allison Recht. George Reed being presented with his diploma by his father, George Reed. Remy Reinlib. Kristen Renda. Jaylene Reyes Bouncy. Allison Rice. Eric Rice. Charlotte Ryder. Robert Reamer. Fabio Riso. Daphne Rivera. Gunnar Robb. Stacey Robostelli. Julia Rodbell. Henri Roque. Jacob Rosen. William Ross. Julia Rothman. Odalis Ruano. Luis Rubio. John Ruggiero being presented with his diploma by his mother, Vicky Ruggiero. Andrew Ryan. Solange Sa. Alexandria, Alexandra Sabia. Veronica Sadler. Joseph Sadowski. Doyle Sands. Kyrie Samishima. Mateo Santa Maria. Jacqueline Santizo. Claire Saporito. Caroline Sharkozy. Alexander Scheuer. Brian Schiff. Jessica Shane. Sophia Chanel. Ryan Schutte. Leon Schwendiner. Cindy Siegel. Zarvan Shah Asif. Adam Silverman. Lucas Silverstein. Sarah Simon. Matthew Syracuse. Sophie Serkman. Luna Slater. Robert Smith. Or Soroker. Julia Soto. 
Ariana Spinagotti. Dylan Stackpole. Morgan Stein. Matthew Stern. Marie Stockton. Michael Strumwasser. Samantha Suero. Alexander Sussman be presented with his diploma by his mother, Brett Sussman. Hannah Swain. Neon Tate. Caitlin Talt. Allison Thaler. Jessica Tovey Wynn. Laura Tucciaroni. Lee Tungus. Nicholas Tunic be presented with his diploma by his mother, Daniela Tunic. Luis Valdivia. Amanda Valetudo. Simone Van Taylor. Gabriela Vasquez. Maximo Vasquez. Catherine Vaughn. Noah Velasquez. Jesse Valu. Kimberly Vidal. Ella Volpano. Charlotte Waldman. Miles Weinrib. Rebecca Wolf, Ryan Wolfson, Zhao Shu, Stephen Don Yu, Sarah Eucalyptus, Luna Segal, John Zapata, Margarita Diaz, Margaret Mimi Zimmer. Being presented with her diploma by her mother, Annie Ward. Ariel Zolan. And Colin Zucker. Thank you, Ms. Jenright. I would say that is unbelievable timing to the class of 2014 Congratulations, and have a wonderful evening. High upon a hill, commanding valley, sea, and sky, proudly stands our alma mater. Sands Mamernik High, Mamernik to thee forever. We will loyal be faithful to our alma mater. Hail, oh, hail to thee. <laughs> Let me see.